uh, as I said, I'm Philip, and hopefully this microphone will stay on my ear the whole time. I think these are not built for people with small ears. And um, I want to talk to you about producing PDFs the lazy way. So how many people in here are lazy? Raise your hand. All right, that's what I like to see. How many of you are so lazy you couldn't even be bothered to raise your hand to answer the first question? <laughs> you, can just, you can just blink. That's fine. Um, lazy in, in this context is just another word for efficient. And uh, so that's what we're going to attempt to do today is uh, learn an efficient way to produce um, PDFs. So uh, a little bit about me. I'm a freelancer. Uh, a lot of people talk about where they work. I get to work for a lot of different clients and companies uh, as a freelancer, so uh, I really enjoy the variety. Um, I do web work, I do back-end work, I do uh, work with C and databases and GUIs and all sorts of good stuff, and maybe I could work for you someday. So if you're interested in that, of course, you can get in touch with me at piespoken.com or just come up and talk to me. So uh, what I wanted to talk to you today about is a couple of different ways to produce PDFs uh, in bulk. And the obvious way to do this for most people is using Report Lab. Report Lab is a really handy library, and if you type PDF Python into Google, you're probably going to get Report Lab back as your first hit. How many people in here uh, have used Report Lab or at least familiar with it? Raise your hands. Okay, only a few. So um, Report Lab is a good library for uh, doing this sort of thing, and it's just a simple Python programmatic library, so it's um, uh, just straight Python code that you use to produce a PDF, and I'll show you a, a brief example of it later. With what I'm here to advocate today is a different way of doing that, and that's by using LibreOffice in a slightly unusual way, and I'll go into some detail about that, and then we'll go through and compare and contrast these two on a number of points to show you um, where I think the LibreOffice method can really do well for you, and it's, it's overlooked. So um, neither one of these is necessarily better than the other, but in the particular use case, you might be using the LibreOffice method, as I said, which is overlooked, uh, might be a lot better for you. So the Report Lab method is sort of like uh, this here. It's a pretty obvious way to go. It's definitely the well-traveled path. It's a pretty wide hallway. It's well-lighted. You know which direction to go. You're going to find other people there. Whereas the LibreOffice method I'm going to tell you about, a little bit more like this, right? Not necessarily an unpleasant place to be, but also maybe a little less well-traveled, and you might have to have, take some unexpected turns, and, and uh, you're going to meet fewer people on the way. As I said, uh, once again, though, not necessarily at all unpleasant or the wrong place. Um, a couple of things that uh, I have to, really it's only one thing, but there's just some Monty Python references up there for those of you who enjoy that sort of thing. Uh, this is not a tutorial. I don't have time to give you a tutorial on either one of these methods in the time that I have, let alone uh, both of them together. So I just want to mention that I am going to talk to you about how to do some of this stuff, but there's going to be a lot of hand-waving and saying, well, that's just sort of an exercise for the reader. This is mostly to familiarize you with a method and, and give you an idea of what you can do with this, rather than actually explaining explicitly how to do it. So does anybody up there know why the number, the third number is up there is number five? Who gets that Monty Python reference? There we go, you in the back. You win a holy hand grenade, congratulations. So a couple more things that I'm gonna mention but not really discuss. Uh, the first one is Report Lab Plus. So Report Lab, as I said, is a great open source package. Uh, it has a commercial sibling called Report Lab Plus. And I haven't used it, so that's the, probably the main reason I don't feel comfortable talking about it. But uh, it's, um, it says that they, they say that it has a report lab markup language, which makes PDF creation like web development. Um, it's got some other nice features. Uh, as I said, I'm impressed with Report Lab as a product itself, so I would think that Report Lab Plus would also be a, a pretty fine product. So if you're interested in that, go out and check it out. But I just needed to mention it, but I'm not going to talk about it anymore. So another thing that I need to um, acknowledge exists, but that I'm not going to talk about, is PyUno, which is a bridge that connects, allows you to talk and, and manipulate, uh, talk to and manipulate LibreOffice through its API using Python. Uh, it exists. I tried to use it once. I wasn't that impressed with it. It seemed a little um, like a lot of dark corners, not that well documented. And I guess the other people I've spoken to have sort of given me similar feedback about that. 
If there's anybody in here who has used it and has had a good experience or bad, please come up and talk to me afterwards because I'd like to hear about what you have to say about it. Uh, so once again, I'm going to say it's there, but I'm not recommending you use it or not using it myself. So let's get to the head-to-head -head question that everybody wants to know. Which one is better? Of these two methods I'm advocating, put them in a ring, two go in, one comes out. Which one is better? And the answer is that it's not really the right question. I really want to emphasize that I'm not here to say one of these is all categorically better than the other. It's just that for particular use cases, one might be better. So what I'd like to do is give you a couple of examples or an example of how each of these methods works to produce the same PDF, and then I'll do a compare and contrast on uh, a number of points to uh, talk about what these are like. So in order to do that, I'm going to step out of my presentation, and I'm going to have to let go of this microphone. I hope it doesn't fall off. So let me go to my file browser here and open that up. Am I going to get an assist? Yeah, please. Because obviously I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Have you got a stapler or something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hot glue would work. Anybody have thumbtacks? Yeah. No, Thank you. As long as I don't move my head. Yeah, actually, move that down. And give you a little bit more elastic here. So let's move this one up. Does that feel like it's a little more stable? Yes, it does. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. You're going to have to tell me what you did afterwards, but it feels a lot better. My arm is getting tired as well. So uh, let me see how I can get this onto this. Oh, look at that. There we go. So there is. There is, there was a PDF. Why aren't you displaying PDF? Was that it? Did I just hit the scroll button? I just hit the scroll button. Okay, here we go. Very simple PDF, uh, just a trivial toy PDF for us to play around with. Uh, it has uh, just three elements. It's got this um, paragraph up top, a table in the middle, and another paragraph down here. So I'm going to show you how to produce this PDF through both uh, the report lab method and also the LibreOffice method. And I should say that we're actually not going to write any Python code here. I'm just going to do some quick overviews, but point out to you how you can do all this through Python. So if I open this document here, so this is um, some Python code, some report lab code. Uh, we don't really need to look at it. I just want to call your attention to, I'm not going to go through it. So it's, it's 60 lines of code. It's a bunch of Report lab code, it does the job. It actually produces this PDF here. That, well, the PDF we just looked at. And I guess what I really want to call your attention to with this is just to point out that um, it's a long way or a big mental leap to connect from this PDF back here to this code here. If you're not a programmer, there's just no connection whatsoever. And even if you are a programmer, you have to think a little bit about like, okay, does this code actually produce this PDF? And of course, if your PDF was longer than just three parts, you might even have a tougher time uh, connecting those two. So like I said, I'm not going to go through this code. I'm just going to close it out here. But just to prove to you, close that PDF, I want to prove to you that that code actually works. I'm going to go uh, delete the PDF and go back into my code here and then run um, sorry come on there we go so that just reran my code and PDF has been recreated on the wrong screen of course so there we go, there it is back and alive. So okay, that's all I wanted to show you about Report Lab, just to know uh, it's there and it exists. Um, now let us look at this LibreOffice document. So if we look at this, uh, you'll recognize, uh, obviously, that it's got pretty much the same structure as the PDF did. It just got a, a paragraph and a table and another paragraph below. The, um, uh, the reason it looks similar is because the point of this method is to produce a document that looks very much like the PDF that you want to create. That's the first step. And what we're actually going to do is then unzip this document, uh, manipulate the XML inside and zip it back up. 
So a lot of your work in the front end here goes into actually building a document the way you want it to look. So I did one thing that's a little bit different here that I want to call your attention to, which is that I added a little bit of text in that first row there. Pay attention to that. I'm going to show you where that is uh, in just a second. So as I said, the trick is with this is that you can actually unzip these documents. So that's something that you might not have known about LibreOffice documents is that uh, they're just zip files. And so you can zip them and unzip them um, with command line tools or the zip file library out of Python's standard library. So I just unzipped it using a command line tool. And uh, let's have a look at the files that got generated there. So it went into a directory called unzipped. And there's a bunch of files there. Uh, I'm actually going to tell you to ignore all of them, except for content.xml. Um, you can maybe mess around with some of the other ones, but for right now, all we want to do is just look at this one file. And if we open it up, it's formatted in a way that only uh, a computer could love. So let me, uh, this is a little tricky to do. Lost my cursor here. Come here, cursor. Let's say. So let's, there we go, much better. So it's still a lot of gloppy XML, but if you start looking down here, you can see some things that you might recognize, right? Like this thing here is from our document, and then here's the name, and here's some other text I pointed out to you, and here's simple stuff. So all this XML is actually governed by a standard. It's by the Open Document Standard. And uh, it's an 864 page, I think, PDF that you can download for free. It's actually an, an ISO standard. And um, I'm not going to tell you to go read an 864 page document. That's not the lazy way, is it, right? <laughs> so pretend I had this document here. And with all due respect, I'm going to cast it aside. And what I'm going to tell you is that this XML is pretty straightforward. And if you use intuition and common sense, you can actually do a lot to this XML and accomplish a lot uh, without ever having to uh, learn what that standard is. So for instance, we can make some simple edits here. Like for instance, I'm looking at this table row and suppose I want to throw in another question here. So I can select that table row, copy and paste. Make a second one here, and favorite color. How about we change that to capital of Assyria? Did I spell that right? I can't actually see the screen too well. So we've added in another row, and maybe we can change favorite color to uh, airspeed velocity. I'm not going to type all that out because I can't actually quite see it, but you get the idea that you can change the text that's in here. Um, remember I called your attention to this name goes here stuff? Well, the reason I wanted to call your attention to it is because it was um, it's wrapped in a hidden LibreOffice um, uh, element called a bookmark. So a bookmark is sort of just what it sounds like. It's an invisible thing that you can put inside of a document that um, you can then find later programmatically. So every bookmark has a name, a unique name. I gave mine the name name, which was a pretty bad choice in hindsight, but there you go. And uh, one of the nice things about this is that the bookmark then allows you to programmatically, using something like XPath, jump right to that bookmark. So even if there were 10,000 pages of XML, we would be able to find this bookmark really easily. So I'm going to make a little edit there. Please do, yes. So it's an elastic thing. Just right. Could you maybe stand there and hold it? <laughs> <laughs> you don't pay me enough for that. <laughs> Thank you. So it's just an elastic pull. It's the elastic pull on the hard side. All right. Tighten it up. Thanks. Get through and then swallow that. Yeah, so that's what I did. So, um, so I've made a change now to the document. So I've made a couple changes. We, we changed the text up there. We added one row. We changed another row. So, uh, good night, by the way. So uh, that's enough changes for right now. Let's see what happens if we zip this document back up. So we go back 
to the command line here and zip that back up and it happens pretty much instantly because computers are great. And I zipped it into a file, if you can see that command called example changed. So if we go back into the file browser and find example changed and open that up and hopefully it didn't break it. Yep, it opens up for us. And so there you can see the changes that I made. Um, and at this point you might be saying, big deal, so what? So you added a table row. But the point is not so much to show you how to do everything. The point is to expose you to the concept that you can go in and you saw what I did. I just filtered around with the XML. It wasn't that complicated. It wasn't even that difficult. And uh, now I've got a nice LibreOffice document that looks just the way I want. Um, I will uh, do a little bit of the hand waving that I was just talking about at the beginning of the talk that uh, from this step, it's really easy to convert a LibreOffice document into a PDF. There's a utility called Unoconv, U-N-O-C-O-N-V, that uh, invokes LibreOffice to convert documents like this to a PDF. So I'm just going to say once we've gotten the document to this point, we're one short step away from converting it to a PDF. There's some quirks about that, to be sure. But uh, the point is that we've now generated a document that looks the way we want. And so hopefully I've then exposed you to the idea of, okay, it's easy enough to get into this XML, uh, even if you're not working with, say, a LibreOffice document, but maybe a spreadsheet to get it to do what you want. So um, I went over that kind of quickly, but the basic concept I hope was clear to everybody. Is everybody kind of okay with that? And we'll go back to the presentation, because it's important that you get that, otherwise the rest isn't gonna make too much sense. Okay, good. So let me go back to my presentation here. I'll go back in. So yeah, compare and contrast. Um, the first thing that I wanna talk about is some, some easy stuff to get out of the way uh, about whether or not these are, for instance, cross-platform. Well, the good news is actually they do very well, both of them on the score, they run on Windows and Linux and probably everywhere you're gonna to wanna to produce PDFs. I don't know about iOS and Android, um, but you're probably not gonna to wanna to build PDFs on, on those uh, on a phone. Both of them can be used with Python 2 and 3. So Report Lab is compatible with Python 2 and 3. LibreOffice doesn't really care too much what you manipulate the XML with, so uh, that's nice. It um, brings you into modern Python. Um, as far as Report Lab goes, it's under a BSD license, so it's very, very fussy, and actually that BSD license will help you out uh, a lot, uh, and I'll tell you about that in a couple of slides. Um, LibreOffice is under a Mozilla public license, and actually that doesn't matter too much because that governs the source code, and you're not gonna use the source code, so that's kind of an interesting detail, but not really important to us. Uh, as far as repairability goes, by that I mean um, what can you do with this tool if it's not behaving and not doing what you want it to do? Well, with Report Lab, it actually is really flexible on this account. It's just pure Python. Uh, you can read the code, you can debug it, you can step seamlessly from your code into the Report Lab library code to mess around with it. Um, that's really nice to do. Uh, you can patch it. I've done that before. I had a patched version of Report Lab um, out on the servers until the, like, our patch made it into the mainstream code, so that's pretty cool. You can even copy the code, it's BSD license. So if you wanna extend it somehow, you can take their code and uh, use it as inspiration for yours. So that's one of the things that the BSD license helps you with. So very high marks for Report Lab on this score. Um, LibreOffice, on the other hand, is all made out of C++. It's gigantic, it's hard to build, so you have to treat it as a black box. If it doesn't do what you want, then you're just out of luck. Um, what about power, what can these guys do? Well, Report Lab has a lot of um, cool features in it uh, straight out of the box. Uh, not only like the simple stuff like building paragraphs and chapters and so forth, but it has bar charts and table of contents and things I didn't even know that it could do until I was researching for this talk. Um, it's also extensible so that if you wanted say maybe pie charts and it doesn't do that, you can write something like that. Uh, so it's got some uh, nice features in it that, in it, uh, that way. So uh, Report Lab does pretty well. LibreOffice, no slouch either, right? Because it gives you a whole office suite to play with. And one of the important things is you can even um, read Microsoft documents with it. So if your finance department hands you an Excel spreadsheet every week and you're expected to include that in some PDF report or something, LibreOffice can uh, make that easy for you. So both of these tools actually, I think are really 
uh, offer you a lot of power. As far as scalability goes, Report Lab is just pure Python. So if you want to throw it into multiple threads or multiple processes or run it with Celery or something like that, that's just fine. It'll do really well with that. Um, LibreOffice, unfortunately, is uh, really bad on this point. Uh, LibreOffice, at least the last time I checked, I think LibreOffice 4, I don't know if LibreOffice 5 is different, but LibreOffice 4 can only run one instance on a computer at a given time. If you try to start up another one, it'll say, no, sorry, it's already running, which kind of makes sense if you think about it. It's really supposed to be an end user tool. Most end users don't need to run two copies of LibreOffice at the same time. But for our purposes, if we're trying to run like you know maybe one uh, uh, run it four copies in each of four processes or something, uh, it's not going to work. So uh, that's unfortunate. Um, so we, really, the LibreOffice mode is pretty much you have to think about it as a batch mode. So which one of these is faster? Well, I don't really know. And in order to answer that question, I'd have to develop several complex PDFs and. Uh, generate them using both methods and then actually benchmark it and that still maybe wouldn't tell you about your particular use case. So um, I wasn't going to let ignorance stand in the way of having an opinion. So uh, I came up with one, but please understand where that's coming from and I, you know, I'm, uh, take it with a grain of salt. My guess is that Report Lab is faster, but uh, I, I'm very much shooting from the hip when I say that. So as far as experimentation goes, what I mean by experimentation is uh, the document that you're generating, the PDF, is you're probably not generating it for yourself. You're probably generating it for some sort of client, whether that's an internal client, same department, different department, some customer outside of your company. They know what they want. They, they have an idea of the document that they want, and they keep having, they're going to have to come to you and say, oh, well, we changed our mind. We would like a different font, different header add a footer, change the page margins, et cetera, et cetera. With Report Lab, that can be time consuming because remember what I showed you in the beginning when I was uh, showing you how to build a, a PDF with Report Lab, it's a big blob of Python code. And ours was only 60 lines long, but we only had a tiny little trivial PDF. So if you have a great big PDF, which you probably will have one of at least some complexity, it can be hard to go into the Python code and figure out what bit of Python code you need to change to get what you want out of the PDF, and also to make sure that whatever code you change isn't going to screw up something else. You know, you might change this image caption, and it turns out to break all of your captions or something like that. So it can be a little time consuming to experiment with Report Lab. With LibreOffice, it's really, really easy because think about it. LibreOffice is a tool for manipulating documents, right? So if you want to change the font, go change the font. You want to change the page header, change the page header. It's really nice. Uh, that's one of the things that, that this method really excels at, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. By complexity, I mean what's the complexity relationship between the method, the work you have to do, and your final document. And I would say Report Lab has what I would call roughly linear complexity. If you have a really, really complex PDF you're trying to create, you're going to have really, really complex code to create it. Um, it's, it's not uh, that complicated of a relationship. You have to do a bunch of work. With LibreOffice, it's not a linear relationship because uh, you can build a document, but remember what I showed you when I was manipulating that XML. It's really easy to copy and paste elements. So if you already have one of what you want, whether that's a list or a single item in a list or a table, table row, an image, a paragraph, it's really easy to make copies of them and manipulate what's inside. Uh, and obviously, it's also easy to delete something. You just grab the XML element that you want to get rid of and uh, whack it, get rid of it. Uh, what's hard is creating something de novo. So I had showed you that document that had uh, two paragraphs and a table in it, and if you said to me, hey, I want to add an image to this document, I'd be lost. I'd be reading that 864-page specification, and I don't want to do that because that's not the lazy way, right? So it's really easy to uh, delete and duplicate things that are already in there. It's very hard to add things that are not. So sort of a general overview of the strengths, I would say that Report Lab in general is really flexible and it's never going to paint you in a corner. Because remember, it's just Python code and it's also extensible so that if it's not doing what you want, uh, you can get it to do what you want. You might have to do more work than you intended. You might end up writing more code than you wanted to. And uh, if at the end of the day, you can do, if you have to write the individual ones and zeros on the disk to get the PDF you want, 
You can do that, probably not what you want to do, but you're not going to get painted in the corner. It's also worth remembering that this is what Report Lab does, right? That there's lots of tutorials out there for it. There's probably even books out there, I mean, e-books. I, I don't know, I haven't uh, looked at them, but Report Labs have been around long enough and enough people use it that I'm sure they're out there. And if you get stuck, there's other people to talk to. There's other discussion groups and, and probably sample code and so on and so forth. So it's a little bit like that slide I showed you earlier with a picture of the people in the hallway. It's, it's you know, a well-lighted place with other people around. LibreOffice uh, really, really excels this, this method that I'm talking about, really excels when you have a lot of content that you know in advance. So if you think about the, a ridiculous case, if you have a thousand page PDF you're trying to produce, and you maybe have one little paragraph in the middle that varies every time that you want to change. If you were using Report Lab, you'd have to write the Report Lab code to generate all those thousand pages even though they don't change. Whereas with LibreOffice, you can just embed that in a document and have one little placeholder paragraph in the middle that you change every time. So the more stuff that you know in advance, the more of your content that's sort of static and uh, is the same every time you generate the PDF, the better I think this LibreOffice method uh, will do for you. But it's also worth remembering that there's not too many people doing this and so it can be a little lonely. Um, I was actually uh, happy that I was posted something about this on my blog just a couple of days ago to sort of supplement this talk and had a couple of people said, hey, I'm doing this, or I was doing something similar. So it's nice to hear that there's other people out there doing this, but uh, it can be a little lonely. So I would like to look at a couple more examples, a couple more PDFs and discuss briefly, I'm not gonna actually show you any code, but just discuss briefly how we might generate both of them with um, uh, Report Lab and LibreOffice. And uh, I'll tell you in advance that, as I said, I'm, I'm here advocating uh, LibreOffice, so I stack the deck a little bit. And uh, I think these two examples will do well with LibreOffice. So where is, is on an example two? All right, here we go. So this is a document from the Tennessee Real Estate Association. Uh, if I remember correctly. And uh, if you've ever bought or sold a house or any other property, you've probably seen something like this. Uh, this particular document is about three pages long. It's lots and lots of text. It's a big block of text. It's actually not that complicated until you start looking at the details. You got this stuff up here that's in title caps font, and this is in a, um, all caps font. And down here, there's some like I think that word is in italics and you start going down here and there's this, there's some bold and underline and a whole, a whole paragraph in a completely different thought in a very angry looking legalistic box. So uh, there's uh, actually a lot going on here despite the fact that there's, you know, there's a whole page here that's nothing but solid text. There's like none of that changes. So how would I generate this using Report Lab? Well, I think the first thing I would do is I wouldn't want to look at all this data in mixed in my code, right? So the first thing that I would want to do is extract this text and put the text somewhere else in a database or maybe something like a, a file, like some sort of markup language actually immediately leaps to mind. So in that markup language, I think that I would want to also carry the description of the text with it. So for instance, the fact that this is bold I would want to go to travel along with the text. And so you could generate your own markup language that would contain text and, and also give you information about how that's supposed to be laid out in the document. And I guess if you're doing that, you could call it Report Lab markup language, right? Because it's a markup language and you're using Report Lab. And I think we talked about that on like slide nine or five or something like that. That's that thing I said I wasn't gonna mention, right? That's Report Lab Plus, that's their commercial product, and uh, I'm still not gonna talk about it, but I, if I was gonna talk about it, this is where I would talk about it, right? Because you can start to see where somebody else having done the legwork of inventing that language for you would be handy. Um, so in any case, you would still have a fair amount of work to do to get all of this expressed in any kind of markup language, and then write the code to handle things like this funky uh, column over here of line numbers and so on and so forth. So I look at this, and this would be a lot of work with Report Lab. With LibreOffice, the way I would generate this document is the first thing I would do is sit down in front of LibreOffice and just build this whole document in LibreOffice. It would still be a lot of work because there's a fair amount of formatting, but chances are that 
your legal department is gonna send you a lot of this text in advance and tell you which of it is supposed to be bolded and so on and so forth. So it might not actually be that much work. And then you would have to go through the document and put bookmarks in these locations that you wanna fill in later so you can find them easily in the XML. And that's most of the work you have to do. You have to write the Python code to unzip the document, find your bookmarks, insert the buyer's name, the seller's name, the relevant uh, fields, but then it's very easy. You've done most of the work in advance by uh, building the document uh, in LibreOffice. And as I said before, it's this whole page here, the second page, this is just plain text. None of that changes. And I wouldn't want to have to rewrite the report lab code to generate that text over and over because in LibreOffice you just generate it, you just build it once and then you're done. So I think this is a good example of a document where LibreOffice, the using the LibreOffice method would save you a lot of work. So let's have a look at one more example. And this is also uh, a document that some of you have probably seen before. Maybe you recognize that. <laughs> if you haven't seen that, I think there's a, the, yeah, there's a man out in the hall who wants to talk to you if you've never seen one of these documents before. <laughs> um, so this is actually a shorter PDF. This is only two pages instead of three. Uh, nevertheless, I would argue that it's more complicated simply because it's so tightly formatted. You have all these boxes jammed up uh, next to each other and it's just not that easy to get around in. You've got some, a font or a, a, yeah, some text here where they adjusted the kerning to cram all this text in this tiny little box. So once again, uh, generating this with Report Lab I think would be a real challenge because you would have to have a language that describes not only the text, but you'd also have to describe how to cram all these little boxes together. It would be a real challenge. Um, and it's not going to be a trivial PDF to, to generate no matter what you use, just because it's so complicated. You've got these weird call-outs on the side here and uh, all these little boxes. Oh, what a lot of trouble that would be. Um, but like I said, I wouldn't want to have to write the language or the Python code to, to describe this or to, to, to generate the PDF from your description language. Once again, using LibreOffice, I think it will be a whole lot easier. It would still be difficult to build all those little boxes and line them up. But the good news is you could see as you're working, like, hey, are things lining up? Am I going to be able to fit this text in this box without having to run a lot of Python code to generate that and see what your end result looks like? And it brings up another point, which is that, as I said before, you're probably going to have your client working with you on this. And your client knows what they want. They know what this document uh, what they want to look, what they want this document to look like. And so an idea is you can actually give LibreOffice to your client and say, hey, look, you guys know what you want. You know, you work it out. So for instance, imagine that you were working with a client on a document of this complexity and it would take some months to get to this point and imagine it's five o'clock on a Friday and you're thinking like, oh, I'm so uh, glad that we're, you know, finally like in the home stretch for this project. And uh, you get an email from Lorraine in the finance department and she says, hey, the PDF looks great. We're gonna give it the green light on Monday if you can just make uh, one change for us and make the last name box, make that one last name box bigger. Uh, have a great weekend, thanks. And so you look and you say, well, there's, there's a last name box here and then there's another one here and then there's more down here, and she said just one, and if I make that bigger, then something else is gonna have to get smaller. And while you're figuring that out, you get an email from Tony in sales and marketing. And Tony and Lorraine, they hate each other, so they don't talk. And, but they talk to you, and Tony's email says, hey, uh, the PDF looks great, we're gonna give it the green light on Monday. If you can just make this one last change for us, can you make the last name boxes, make all of them smaller? And you're saying, well, if I make that smaller, then something else has to get bigger. And she said to make it. And so now you're stuck in the middle and, and, and bureau clock just got another two hours further away. And you, you don't want to have to be in the middle of, of, of this. If you give Tony and Lorraine and the rest of your clients over there LibreOffice and say, look, you guys work out what you, what you want your PDF to look like. Just give me a document that looks the way you want it to look and I'll do the magic at the end. That's really nice, because then if Tony and Lorraine kill each other trying to decide how big the last name boxes should be, you don't have to be involved. You know, it's, it's, it's nice that they can do it, and uh, sorry for the buzzword, but it empowers your client. They feel good about it because they actually get to participate in generating what they want. And it's also nice for them, too, because 
if you think about the client, their position in this, if they have to come to you every time they want to make a change, it's a bit of a hassle. So they come to you, it's like you're the wizard in the tower and they have to say, uh, oh, you know, wizard, we supplicate ourselves before you. We would like to change the font from uh, Times New Roman to MS Comic Sans. And you're the wizard and you roll your eyes and say, yes, I shall grant your request even though it's a bad one. And so you change the font and they come back to you the next day and they say, oh, wizard, we made a big mistake. And you say, yes, I know. And you say, <laughs> we want to change the font back to Times New Roman. And then, okay, it's Times New Roman. And then they, when the next day they want to adjust the margins. And it's a hassle for them and it's a hassle for you. You have other things you need to do and they don't want to come with this back and forth to you to, to make simple requests. So being able to give them a tool where they can generate the document themselves makes everybody happier and makes workflow faster. So it's not got a lot to do with technology, but it's got a lot to do with business and workflow. Um, it's really nice. So uh, those are two examples I had. I didn't want to stack the deck too much in, in the LibreOffice favor, so I thought about, okay, what would be an example where LibreOffice, using this LibreOffice method, would really fall on its face and using a report lab would do really well? And I came up with one which was a restructured text to PDF converter. And it turns out there is such a thing. It comes free with Report Lab. It's in the unofficial or unsupported directory. It's a contribution. And if you think about it, Report Lab would do really well at that because you've got a restructured text parser. It reads in elements. OK, I've got a table. I've got a paragraph. And all you'd have to do is translate them directly to Report Lab elements, and you'd get a nice PDF out of it. Using this LibreOffice method is not really clear to me how you would do it because remember LibreOffice does really well when you know a lot of your content in advance and you can copy elements and adjust them a little bit. But that's a context where you know none of your input in advance and that just, yeah, this would not be a method to use uh, in that case. Don't go away screen. Uh, we've gotten this far. I don't want to lose my video now. So um, that's an example that gets back to the point about what I talked, what I mentioned earlier, is that there's no, uh, you can't just say one of these methods is always better than the other. It's, it's case dependent. Um, and I've hopefully given you some uh, ammunition as to why I think this is better in some cases. So let us go back to the presentation. We are in the home stretch here. Um, I would have liked to have given you a decision-making flowchart to where I could say, oh, you know, if these are your use cases, then you could go through this and you should use this method or you should use that one. But the compare and contrast points that I talked to you about before, they're kind of a lot of soft points. There's a lot of like, well, maybe this is better, maybe this is. There's not a lot of easy yes and no's, so it doesn't make uh, for easy flowchart material, so that's why there's no uh, flowchart there. And uh, that's really about all I had to talk to you about. Uh, I just want to say that uh, now you have an extra tool in your toolbox. It's always really nice to have two ways to solve a problem instead of one, because one might be better. So uh, I hope that was new to you. As I mentioned before, I just started posting this on my blog. I'm going to follow up on my blog with more information, specific code examples about how to do this. And it was interesting also to see some people popping up and starting to talk about this. So uh, there's a, a nascent conversation on there. And if you're interested, I encourage you to join it and chime in. So that's all I had. I think we have time for Q&A. Is that correct? Yeah. So time for Q&A. Thank you very much for coming. And thanks also to Pi Ohio for sponsoring us all here. Yeah, shoot. Sure. Well, uh, I don't know nearly as much about Microsoft formats, but I think that modern Microsoft formats are also um, XML-based. So but they are. Yeah. But they are, OK. If you open the XML uh, for uh, a Word file, it just start, it starts to have, like, you cannot legally read the rest of those files. You cannot. <laughs> well, there you go. So as long as you don't have your lawyer present, I think you're good. Um, just don't read it. Yeah. <laughs> There's also the question of the final step. I know with LibreOffice, you can invoke it headlessly that converts uh, from any LibreOffice format to a PDF. I don't know what you would do for the Microsoft step. You could certainly uh, automate Word. It might be a little clunky. I don't know that it would be that much clunkier than invoking LibreOffice. And that's actually one of the knocks that I didn't mention in the talk is that people say LibreOffice, like you can actually if you try to use it repeatedly and, and bash through like a thousand PDFs, that it falls over pretty quickly and you have to restart it. Modern Word can also save as the LibreOffice format. So if you can actually mock anything up you want in Word, if that's what you have, uh -huh. and save it and 
still use the same tools we talked about. Oh, neat. I, yeah. I'll never get my people to use LibreOffice the same anymore. Uh-huh, uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah. I have a question about um, the opposite of that, the scraping PDF. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if the story on, you know, like the perfect thing would be like a, ta- a 1040. Can I, with some minimal configuration, teach it where each field is and get a key of the question and a value of the, and like, is the story getting better <laughs> in terms mm-hmm. of scraping PDFs? I don't know nearly as much about that. I did, I was actually working on a, project where we were producing PDFs and it was really important that they were correct and we were using PDF Miner. Have you ever used that? Yeah, yeah, and I had some success with that, but I have to agree, it, the data that comes out of it is fairly raw and, you know, it was a bit of work to say, you know, is the data actually there and is it in the right place on the screen? It would tell you all that, but you had to do some work and some math. So um, that, that's kind of all I have to recommend on that front. You look a little disappointed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. That's a great case for mechanical Turk. Like that's mm. if if the data is acceptable, I've I've been in that boat and then I found out even better they were scanned in old like taxes, so I could have looked at the modern text and then it's <laughs> mechanical Turk. Yeah. So if there's no more questions, I'll just thank you all very much for coming out. Oh, you got one? Good. Hit me. Do you think in the future it would make sense to start having a Python library that makes uh, the tweaking and editing of the XML more kind of like a higher level semantically? So that instead of like kind of building in the model and the data that we talked mm-hmm. about, kind of HTML style stuff, like, oh, we're going to give you, you know, paragraphs. Or, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I know a company produces a markup language that makes ATM, HTML, uh, uh, PDF production just like web. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see what you're saying, and that's kind of the, because like what I showed you is really raw, right? It is going in and editing XML, and so the obvious thing is like, right, how how can I take a step up? And I think that what you have to do is get either a bunch of people in one company doing this or enough people doing this as a group to say, hey, here's a common use case. Let's extract this out into a library. if it's there, if you have that critical mass of people doing it yet, I don't know about it. Is it theoretically possible, though, to start making kind of like hyper-compound Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Because to me, it's very case-dependent what you actually want to modify within the XML. So I don't know that it, it actually could be. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, you don't want that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had a question. Um, I you know, have actually done some PDF scraping using Dyson PDF Plus, and it was a big, it took a lot to get started, but once I started to figure out my way around it, it was a, actually a pretty good tool, and it moved pretty speedily as compared to some of the other tools that I've been using. All right. Yeah. For the XML parts or uh, work, did you just use stock Python or XML library? Yeah. Elementary. elementary. Yeah. Uh, but yes, it, it's, you know, use your favorite XML library. It's one of the nice things about it. So did you have to do anything uh, to protect kind of the bookmarks that you were putting into the document? No, actually, I guess the, the couple of times I've done this, I had just gotten my client to give me the document that they wanted. But you can imagine if you go through multiple rounds of editing, those bookmarks are going to get trashed at some point. So you just have to make sure that they're there. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you uh, tried Wheezy Print and uh, how, how is it compared? I have not tried Wheezy Print. Tell me about it. Uh, it's an HTML based PDF. Uh, okay. 
I, um, I was using something that's similar, and I guess the, the complaints I've heard about them, if, they can, if th that's fair, is to say that you don't get quite the WYSIWYG uh, uh, output that you get when you're using something like a document editor, like Report Lab can give you really precise positioning and things like that. But if you don't, uh, if that's not an absolute requirement, I think that actually some sort of HTML to PDF converter is a pretty nice way to go. I have actually uh, done that, yeah, as a, as a part of a demo for an internal project, just, you know, just you to be able to show. How far would it scale? I think it would scale pretty badly because it's just, like I said, it's just serial, you know, and you have to, you have to do that in line of the web request. It's not very nice. Um, would it be able like I don't know because that all depends on the complexity of your document. Okay. Um, Yeah, a little bit, and actually I was just Googling before I came over here, and there's some patch that just made it into LibreOffice 5.2 that's being backported to address, you know, so I think actually more people are using it in this automated fashion, which is good because that'll help work the bugs out and make it more robust. I love all these tools that are out here to slide between formats. And nice to hear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can do it. Interesting. You can open PDFs directly into LibreOffice and these sites save them as uh, open documents. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. There you go. That should have been a slide, actually, if I'd known. It's a boarding board and it's just a boot of test. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Well, there you go. Well, thank you very much, everyone. And also a shout out to Eric for fixing my earpiece problems because that was going to look pretty silly if I did this the whole talk. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.